So we hear so much about targeted therapy today in lung cancer, but actually the most common gene to be abnormal in our lung cancer patients is a gene called RAS. And about a third of our lung cancer patients have mutations in KRAS, and currently there's no targeted therapy available for them, so they can only have the standard chemotherapy, immunotherapy. So binimetinib is a very potent oral inhibitor of MEK1 and MEK2, and we've learned that KRAS driven tumors really rely on MEK and uh, signaling through MEK in order to promote cancer growth and survival. So binimetinib blocks that pathway. Uh, it's a very well tolerated agent. It's currently been approved a, in combination with a, a RAF inhibitor, something called encorafenib, for patients with advanced melanoma, and that's an approval from this year. So a few years ago, we thought that it would be great to try and add that to first-line chemotherapy for patients with lung cancer to really try and give those KRAS mutant tumors an extra kick. So the data that we've presented here at this meeting are to find a safe dose or from a phase one trial. So we've actually expanded up to the, the recommended dose that's traditionally used with binimetinib. Uh, our patients had a little bit of extra toxicity at the higher dose so we're currently expanding at a slightly lower dose that's much better tolerated we've already seen responses we've already seen activity but during that time lung cancers really changed and so we've gone from everybody receiving chemotherapy up front to a good number of these patients now receiving immunotherapy so we're actually going to expand the study we're collaborating both with array the manufacturers of benmetinib and Merck the manufacturers of pembrolizumab and our next cohort is going to be pembrolizumab immunotherapy plus benimetinib and we're going to be looking not only at what happens on the scans and in terms of patient safety but also we're going to be looking at blood-based markers to understand how do we know who's benefiting how do we find out early if somebody's progressing and needs a different approach uh, and and what does the added benefit of blocking MEK what does that give us in the space of immunotherapy and these are all very important unknown questions and so we're so excited to have a chance to answer